You know what, ladies and gentlemen, this song is so appropriate right now. This song is called Follow the Leader. Ladies and gentlemen, I, I had to do this video, as I promise you, as tired and as fatigued as I am, I had no other choice but to do this video. It really is that important. Now, you'll say, well, why is it that important? Because I said it's that important, mother... I, I apologize. Rakim will say peace, okay? Follow the leader. The courthouse. The the, the, the courthouse. We're going to talk about the courthouse for a second. Y'all don't mind? We're going to talk about the courthouse for a second. We told y'all something about that courthouse. Take a look at this second case right here. Temple of Justice. Ladies and gentlemen, Temple of Justice? Sorry, my that's opera. I don't know why opera did that. That's because I'm, I'm touching screening, and I can't be touching screening because the computer don't like that. Temple of Justice. We didn't show this to y'all before, but we're going to show it to y'all again. He who serves the G-O-O-D-E-S-S-J-U-S-T-I-C-E. Escalama Nation. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the motto. No, 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 no. We ain't just going to be talking about this. Why did I do that? Oh, goodest. <laughs> he who serves the goodest justice. Ladies and gentlemen, pay attention. This is the Supreme Court.gov. Thesis, known by her clear sightedness, was the Greek goddess justice and law. In Roman mythology, justicia. Justice was one of the first virtues, along with prudence, fortitude, and temperance. Over time, justice became associated with scales to represent impartiality and a sword to symbolize power. No, ladies and gentlemen, the sword didn't symbolize power. The sword symbolized force. Ladies and gentlemen, I want you to understand something. This is the goddess justice. You've heard of that statue in front of the Supreme Court being referred to as Lady Justice. It originates from the personification of justice, an ancient Roman god. Ladies and gentlemen, not a Roman god. This is a Babylonian god. She was known as Artemis. She's known as Esther. Esther, Artemis are all the same. Diana, it's all the same stupid god. Hold on. Oh, oh, look at that. She's a dyke. Okay. No, 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 no. She literally is a dyke. She's a hoe. If you don't believe me, pull up a picture. Wait, hold on. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. Then we're going we gonna to show y'all why this is so important for you guys to know what arena you're in. Okay, now you can't go like I do and put this right in their eye. Look, yeah, 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 take that, mother. You can't do that, ladies and gentlemen. You can't just be putting your finger in their eye and going twisting and turning. Can't do that, ladies and gentlemen. Don't work that way. <sighs> ladies and gentlemen, this is one picture. Okay, when I say she's a hoe, let me, let me show you all how much of a hoe she is. Excuse me, where, where, where's the real pictures of the hoe? Now, them, them are not the pictures, y'all. Do not let them fool, y'all. That's the pictures where they don't want y'all to really see who she is. It hasn't pulled up. God will repay those who hurt you. Really? Karma, justice, quote. Karma, God, justice, quote. God will do justice, quote. Excuse me? The goddess of justice. Ladies and gentlemen, this is, what, what is this thing, official what? Official path to exile? What does it mean to walk with God? This ain't got nothing to do with that God. This ain't got nothing to do with the God of the heavens. This is the pagan God, the goddess of justice. Come on, where where's she at? Where the hoe at? I mean, the, the dyke. It, it ain't going to show us, y'all. 
It ain't going to show us the goddess dyke uh, justice. That's a shame. This, that, that ain't her. So let's do this. Ladies and gentlemen, this is Anthony Hamilton, and he's asking y'all to walk in my shoes. And he's in my background. Some of y'all are able to hear him. It isn't as loud as I would like it to be on this evening because I'm about to. I'm still on daylight savings time, everyone. Okay, I, I have not adjusted. I've been falling asleep at 6.30, 7 o'clock every evening. First, I am tired. I have been getting up an hour early every single day. So instead of me, normally I'd get up at 6. So now I'm getting up at 5. Why? Because I'm still on that original time that we were on a month ago. Ladies and gentlemen, they ain't giving me my goddess. Uh, 4,079 images of the goddess justice. Okay, let's do you. There's got to be one of them that's going to show her with the 185 billion breastuses. She's the same goddess that they use for Easter. She's the goddess Esther. She's the fertility god. Ladies and gentlemen, if you guys do not realize what the goat god, um, abide on or whatever that character is, all of these stupid gods, ladies and gentlemen, this is what's going on. This is whom they are worshiping. When they deliver you to justice, they're delivering you to the goddess of justice. Yes, I didn't put it in capital. I, you better believe I'm putting it in lowercase. Did you mean? Yes, I did mean that. You people put it in capitalized. It's a fake god. It's a false god, ladies and gentlemen. Let me let me leave that alone because we just you can do the research yourself. Let let's move on because I'm tired. Okay, I want y'all to walk up mile in these shoes. Pay attention. Granite structure reflecting the citizenry's pride at the journey from their original courthouse built of logs some 120 years earlier. No, that ain't the citizenry doing this goddess justice thing. Pay attention. A particular pride was the main courtroom on the back wall in which was sculptured the... The Kellogg, which now forms the basis of the judicial code of every civilized nation on earth, and the blind goddess of justice, now called Lady Justice or Diana. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the court saying this. This is not me saying this. No, this is one case. Hold on. If y'all ever walked a mile in my shoes, Y'all will see why I'm so frustrated all the time. Hold on. The sculpture recounted the historical developments of law with images of the blind goddess of justice, now called Lady Justice, ancient gods and goddesses, and the laws of Roman and tribes of Israel. Ladies and gentlemen, the tribes of Israel did not believe in no blind female goddess of justice. I just did a video that will be up probably tomorrow. I don't know if I'm going to put it up tonight because it's, it's an hour and some hours long talking about these false gods. Okay? Just did a video showing that this is our society. If you guys don't know that there's a battle, okay, gods are battling. If you don't realize that by now, then you need to go back and take a look at the Avengers. That's what the Avengers is about. Y'all need to pay attention. The Avengers is only about God. What do you think Thor is all about? Captain America is supposed to be the God of America, representing all that she stands for, truth and justice, the God is justice, and the transgender American way. No, I'm just kidding with the last part. Okay? On either side of the lady justice, who bears the scales of justice in one hand and holds the sword of justice in another hand. The sword has nothing to do with justice. The sword has everything to do with war. See, if you don't do what they say, then they come at you. That's what the sword is for. That's why the ego, the bald ego, another god, 
has both arrows, meaning they'll shoot their missiles at you, or palm trees. They make themselves look like they're lambs, like they're, they're out there for all of you. Like I said, this ain't the end of it. I just want to show you guys this so that you'll know what's going on. Okay, this is a different case saying the same thing. This is me letting you know that this ain't just me saying this. This is the court saying this. This is the third case saying the same thing. It is a picture of the blind goddess of justice, and they put it in capital letters, people. Worshipped in ancient times by pagans, okay, again, it is a pagan god who had no knowledge of the Christian god, really, but who believed that this goddess of justice presided over the souls of the judges who held in their hands the lives and liberties and property rights of those whose causes were called upon to be determined and decided. The mythological Greece and Rome teaches us that this goddess of justice was blind when she posed her scales. Ladies and gentlemen, Artemis is Greek. Arimathea, Greek. It was never a Roman god. It was Greece. Okay? You know, ladies and gentlemen, this is Color Me Bad. And they're singing the bells. And I've always liked this song, their version of it, because they did they did such a good job at this song. I I did not anticipate this from Color Me Bad, the I Wanna Sex You Up crew. Okay? Color Me Bad, ladies and gentlemen. Let's hear it for sexual tackling. I apologize. Ladies and gentlemen, let me show you something else. Um let me make sure of something. I, I can't be – yeah, I can show you guys this. I, because I have other people's documents sometime up, and I can't be showing you guys their stuff. I can only show you stuff that, you know, ain't going – got to protect the rights of the stupid, okay? Okay, so your mama, she's protected here, okay? That's why I said that. Do you hear the bell? You see this right here? His first duty is to the court and the public, not to the client. Whenever the duties of the client conflict with those he owes to an officer of the court in the administration of justice, the former must yield to the latter. Remember, everything he does is in the administration of justice while he operates as an officer of the court. So everything he does, he ain't got to do nothing for you. You have the right to counsel. You don't have the right to Pay attention. You don't have the right to an attorney who's going to fight for you. You just have the right to counsel. So, ladies and gentlemen, hey, color. Hey, guys. Hold on. I'm going to have to pause them, you guys, and I apologize because, like I said, I do like that song a lot. This is what this video is about, this section right here. First thing we showed you, remember, they're administering justice. They're administering the affairs of a pagan god. They're carrying out her wishes. Yes, they worship this false god. Just like the Illuminati and the Freemasons worship a so-called goat god. A goat! God, how much how stupid can you get worshiping a stupid goat? Ladies and gentlemen, the video I did earlier, it'll probably be up tomorrow. I I think I know the name of it, but I can't, I don't remember it. I did it earlier today. Ladies and gentlemen, that's going to talk about this whole worshiping of God and how the people of Israel did not worship false gods. When they did, they suffered calamity because the true God doesn't play that. He says he will never be in competition with a false god. You guys must really understand that that's why he's getting ready to do what he's getting ready to do, because he never created us to worship anybody else other than him. Yes, we were created to worship him. If you don't believe me, go back. Look at John, the fourth chapter. Look at verse 24. John 4, 24. Okay, just John 4, 24. He's talking to the Samaritan woman. 
by the well. He's explaining to her who he is. And then he tells her what God is looking for. Then Micah tells you the same thing. Micah tells you in the 6th chapter, verse 8, what God is expecting of you. It's not just Micah. You can go to James, the 4th chapter. And James, the 4th chapter, will tell you what he's expecting of you. Then you can go to Isaiah. That's right, I said Isaiah, the 65th chapter. And it will tell you what he's expecting of you in the 48th chapter, and it will tell you what he's expecting of you. So I tried to do what he's expecting of me. I am not successful 24 hours a day, but I guarantee you, by the time the day's in, I'm a pretty good B, B plus. Like I said, do the best I can. Because he's my best friend, you know what I mean? But anyway, let's get back to this attorney-client thing. <sighs> Ladies and gentlemen, an attorney is an officer of the court. Okay, fine. Not that everybody understands that. An attorney is an officer of the court. It, it lets you know that he has a duty to the court. But I don't want you to focus on the duty to the court. I want you to focus on, as an officer of the court, in the administration of justice, ladies and gentlemen, the Department of Justice, to whom all the attorneys in the state are under, the Department of Justice, to whom all the attorneys in the United States are under, that's the head of the bar. The Department of Justice is an administrative branch. Go back and look at the first Judiciary Act. He's part of the administrative branch. He's not part of the judicial branch. They cannot be officers of the court because separation of powers prohibits it. Don't let no court tell you otherwise. The courts don't get the rule on that. They don't have the jurisdiction because the separation of powers clause prevents them from ruling on that. The law says what the law says, and that's the Constitution. This was never supposed to be a unified government, ladies and gentlemen. Separation of powers was separation of powers so that no one branch would sit up there and reign supreme by joining with another branch of government. They are not supposed to be taken sides. So here you have a conflict of interest, ladies and gentlemen. The attorney, they cannot appoint an attorney for you who is an officer of the court. Okay, because that's your participation in a violation of the separation of powers clause. That's your participating in an unconstitutional act don't matter. You highlight it. Put that on the record. Go back in the court and do a reconsideration. Said you were denied your right to counsel of choice, a counsel who was not in conflict with the Constitution. And the court's appointment of counsel for you was a violation of your constitutional rights, your constitutionally secured rights. To impartial counsel, you have the right to a fair trial, which means your counsel cannot be partial. By being an officer for the state that's prosecuting you, all attorneys are officers of the state. And being an officer of the court, which is a conflict, you cannot be an officer of the state and an officer of the court, the judicial branch and the executive branch at the same time. At the same time, can't wear them two hats because that's a violation of the separation of powers clause so do your criminal complaint against that idiot now hold on let me show you let me prove to you because you know how the courts don't like corpus juris secundum the courts never quote corpus juris secundum y'all keep in mind that that's why you don't see it in no case law hold on now this the god is justice let's talk about corpus juris secundum shall we let's see how the courts never quote corpus juris secundum he the attorney however in a sense an officer of the state, not in a sense, he is an officer of the state, with an obligation to the court and to the public, no less significant than his obligation to his client. They just said exactly what that said. The attorney owes his duty to the court and to the public, and the client comes last. Just said the exact same word. Ladies and gentlemen, I didn't write this. These are not my cases. Oh, look at that. 
Corpus Juris Secundum. Ain't that a shame? Volume 7, subsection 4. Volume 7, subsection 4. You want to use this case because they use Corpus Juris Secundum. This is Georgia. And they did this in 1960. Sorry, ladies and gentlemen, you see the excitement in my voice because I should have looked this up a long time ago. Here it is, Corpus Juris Secundum again. An attorney does not hold an office of public trust. Wait, hold on. Let me make sure these are not the same cases. That's 1969, so they're not the same cases. Nine years apart, and they're saying the same thing. Hold on. Let's see if we find another one. An attorney, attorneys are officers of the court, and their first duty is to the administration of justice. Attorneys cannot be officers to the, of the court. Part of the attorney general's office, attorney general's office is the administrative office. The court cannot provide you counsel to prosecute you, the attorney, for the other side. If they're all officers of the court, then that's unfair. Because you were entitled to a fair trial. So they can't give you an attorney who's an officer of the court when the judge is an officer of the court and the prosecution is an officer of the court. They can't all be part of the same office. Do you guys not understand that? that the prosecution's office and the public defender cannot be part of the same office. Y'all do understand that, right? But they are part of the same office. There's nothing in the Constitution which says all attorneys must be under the Attorney General. But that's the way it is. There's nothing in the Constitution which says that the Bar Association is where attorneys are going to be registered. That's all administrative law, ladies and gentlemen. Attorneys are officers of the court. They owe their first duty to the administration of justice. Attorneys are officers of the court. They owe their first duty to the administration of justice. Ladies and gentlemen, an officer of the court, the lawyer's obligation to the court and the public is as significant as the obligation to the client. Ladies and gentlemen, no, it isn't. It's superior to the obligations to the client. Do not let them use words is as significant. Okay? Uh-uh. That's the catchphrase is as significant, just like a day to God is as a thousand years. It's greater than a thousand years, but it's as a thousand years. You follow me? Interesting, ain't it? You see, the relationship between the lawyer and the client is a special one of trust that entitles the client to the attorney's fidelity. Who cares about the attorney's fidelity? What about his loyalty? Loyalty. What about his loyalty? Okay, that, that's what I say. Go ask somebody, because your attorney doesn't represent you. He represents the court. As an officer of the court, the lawyer's obligation to the courts and the public is as significant. Another Georgia case. It looks like Georgia's been the one that's been handling this. The concept that a lawyer is an officer of the court is not an idle expression to impress the laity, but is indica indicative, indicate, indicative. I, I, see, I know it's indicative but it's indicative of his responsibility to assist the court in the administration of justice. He has a responsibility to assist the court. Look at that. So he has a dual obligation and dual, triple, quadruple loyalty to himself, to the court, and to the public. Then to you. I didn't write this. Look, his first duty is not to the client or a senior partner, to the administration of a justice. Why? Why is it his first duty to justice? He's an attorney. His first duty is supposed to be to that contract. By putting a first duty to the court, to justice, you've now interfered with the party's right to contract. You've now interfered with the attorney-client relationship. Okay? Remember, I'm going to show you guys one more. And then we're going to go back to that so I can let you see what's going on. In so doing, the attorney of the law firm lost sight of the fact that as a member of the bar and an officer of the court, administrative, so-called judicial, our primary responsibility is not to the client, but to the legal system. Our judicial machinery is dependent upon full support of all members of the bench and the bar. Ladies and gentlemen, where's that law at? 
Where is that law at? This is a procedural thing, ladies and gentlemen. So how do you handle the procedural thing? Give me a second so I can show it to you. TikTok, I forgot I even had that open. That's when I touch the screen. That's what that's what happens right there. I want to go here. Knew I shut it down. Ladies and gentlemen, attorney and client. These are legal terms. Go ahead and look at the Constitution. The word attorney never appears. Go ahead and look at the Constitution. The word client never appears. These are legal terms. They've defined what an attorney and client means. By the way, I promise you, if you take a look at it, because the corporate jurors, the kind of I've looked at, it's attorney hyphen client. But nonetheless, do yourselves a favor. Do your research. Go back and challenge them. Every time they want to appoint an attorney for you, you tell the court, sorry, it's a conflict of interest. You can't appoint an attorney for me. That's not even your job. As a matter of fact, nothing in the Constitution gives you the authority to appoint anybody. You're using my power of attorney to appoint an attorney. So I don't want you to appoint one of your officers. I want my officer. I've only given granting limited power of attorney where the attorney will represent my interests first ahead of everyone else's because I'm hiring him to defend me, not to protect you or your so-called legal system. Your legal system has nothing to do with law. He owes the duty not to justice, but he owes the duty to the law, not a statute. All right. Some people are going to get what I'm talking about. I know there will be some, um, as my boys calling me bad said, there will be some bells going off. Okay? Because I can hear the bells, ladies and gentlemen, going off in people's heads. Okay, because they're now starting to understand some arguments they can bring forth in court now that they have these laws. Ladies and gentlemen, you have the cases. That's why I take my time showing them to you. That's why I go through each one so that you can type those in and you can pull up. But what you really need to do is see the phrase and type that into case text. Okay, I know case text has gotten a whole lot more popular as a result of me because the attorneys couldn't advertise like this so for case tech allowing us to utilize their website to achieve some correction ladies and gentlemen then by all means I'm going to give them the credit they deserve we got a couple more seconds before this phone goes off and then I'm ending this video I just want to let you guys know in the last week and a half maybe two and a half weeks I've not been able to accomplish much at all because I am extremely fatigued, very tired. Matter of fact, even today, I, I got some small things accomplished, but nothing real. All right, so I'm going to go lay down. I want to thank all of you for taking the time to listen to this, but I got to go. I told you we were going to end with that song. I mean, this nothing compares to you with coming on next with Prince, but I, I don't have that type of energy. I hope this information proves beneficial to y'all. If it don't, then... <laughs> I'm sorry. I was going to say something and I'm tired. I probably would have let that go too. I wouldn't have taken it back at all. I apologize. I'm going to get off this, uh, you know, I'm going to get off of this microphone. Y'all take care. Speak to you later. Got to go.